Good morning everyone and welcome to today's video. We are going to talk a little bit about extreme frugal living. Coming from the Mennonite heritage, one thing about my family was they were extremely frugal. They didn't have to be frugal, but my mother always chose to be. For $7.86, I got this chicken. And the reason why I got this chicken was because it was deeply reduced. This chicken is going to give us so many meals. So what I like to do is when I get the chicken is to prepare it ahead of time. We have five chicken breasts, which you will see me shortly cutting it into half. And that means it's going to give us 10 meals. And one way to really stretch your dollar is by stretching your meat, which most of you know that, that watch my videos. Most of you are extremely frugal. But my mom taught me so many things about being frugal in the kitchen. And my mother never threw anything away. She learned how to repurpose and reuse things. It came from her very plain black bumpered Mennonite traditions. They were called black bumpered because they were extremely plain. They had vehicles, but the vehicles were painted black, the chrome and the vehicle. Because in those days, and they're still in Lancaster County, black bumpered Mennonites, they believe that chrome shows vanity. And they were all against vanity, and so they would paint the chrome black. So as we work on this chicken, let me show you what else I'm doing. For this, I'm going to be putting some ranch dressing. So this is powdered ranch dressing, because each one of these little pieces is going to give us part of a meal. So we would get our protein, but we're not going to have excess amount of meat. So as you can see here, this is producing a lot of meals. I'm going to go ahead and freeze this and then I'll work on another project that's saving money. Of course, home canning can save you lots of money, but there's a lot of things that come in factor. So with home canning, you have to have your jars pretty cheap if you get them at a yard sale or even get them free. And of course, the lids. For me, the lids are free because I ask for them for my birthday, for Christmas, and for Mother's Day. Two years ago, I was able to get chicken for 39 cents a pound. And that chicken I canned in large quantities. And I still have those jars today. So this broth was really cheap. So what I am making is chicken noodle soup. And as you see, I am not editing anything out. When I open a can up, each can, I normally give it a good smell just to make sure it smells all right. And I put it into the crock pot. The crock pot saves me lots of money and it doesn't take a whole lot of electricity and I don't have to worry about meal time. It cooks for itself. So we have the corn and we have all of the broth and we're going to make some chicken noodle soup as well this morning. I don't have a microwave and to save on our propane on our stove, what I do is I heat my butter on top of the crock pot. I flip the lid backwards and then I set the butter on top and I let it melt. Many times it's very challenging for me to have cooking shows on YouTube because I don't really follow directions. And my mom didn't really have cookbooks. She only had two. My mother cooked by feel and taste. And it's absolutely delicious. It tastes a little bit different each time we make it. The added pleasure of canning is you have the jars, all you have to do is wash them and you can reuse them over and over again. After years of not having hot water, it's such a blessing to be able to have some hot water and not have to heat it at the stove. Frugal living is usually a little more of a harder work, but yet, it's so nice to have some modern conveniences. I've gone so long without certain modern conveniences that it's just no sense in being so frugal to the point that it's extreme, that it's become very, very labor intensive and it's really hard on your body. So I am extremely thankful that I do have hot water now and there's certain things in my life that are just a little bit easier. Once a month I wash the globes to my oil lamps and Soon I won't have to have them lit as much anymore. Soon we're getting into the springtime and then we can 
save a little bit on the fuel for the oil lamps. Now, once again, the fuel for the oil lamps, I don't really buy that because that's given to me as gifts. I'm a practical person. Our children know what I like and they buy the things that I can really use. Now the oil lamps do help me out in so many ways. They're not always such a money saver, but they do produce heat in our home and they produce light. And I love the atmosphere of the old fashioned way of living. And that is something that my ancestors would have been raised with. And I just love that part of it. So we're washing all the globes today. I was going to edit this out, but I thought, why would I do that? It's a little bit of the behind the scenes here. My husband does a lot of things to help me. And while he's not on video, he's always just right around the corner. As you can watch here in just a moment, what takes place. Oh, there he comes. Oh, and there I go. <laughs> it's absolutely funny. Sometimes I wish I had four hands. Sometimes I do. One way to get that kerosene scent out of your home is by using candle essential oils or candle fragrances. I don't buy any essential oils for putting them in my oil lamps. What I do is I go to the thrift store and if I ever find any of the candle fragrances, I just pour that in and it works amazing. And there is absolutely 100% no scent whatsoever of the kerosene. And that works out amazing for me. People have asked me that all the time. So for me, this is what I do. And this is my life. Some call it frugal. Some call it extreme frugal. Some people say it's a very strange way of living. Eccentric. I've been called every name in the book. But it's my life. And it's a wonderful life for me. It's not for everyone, but it's my life and it's what I enjoy. When I started my YouTube channel, I was called low income. That's what it was on our taxes. In fact, when I first started my YouTube channel, we were below the low income. We were actually listed as poverty income. Now, it wasn't always that way. In fact, I've gone from high income, middle income, and now, once again, I'm considered lower income, but I'm not low income anymore. And maybe I'm not even considered lower income, more like middle class income. But the expenses are really high. But it's through all of the work that I have done through these years, and because of all of you, that there are some things that are better in my life. And I'm so thankful for that. One of the things that I have really learned through this experience is that no matter what your income level is, you can take pride in your home. No, not in the boastful pride, but in the pride of trying to take care of what you have. Now, I don't have all the money in the world to do all of the major fix-ups that I would like to do, but as the years go by, little by little, we are fixing things, and it's a really good feeling. We are not in debt, and I'm so thankful for that, and I will never go in debt again. That is one vow that I will not ever break. So if you were tax accountant and you would be looking at me and my husband, what would we be called and what bracket would we be in and what would we be? Well, we would be considered extremely frugal and that would be the bracket that would be in. And so I'm going to try not to use the words low income, but I will say lower income. You must understand it's a mindset. I don't know if anybody of you have ever lost a lot of weight. And then you go to the store and you're always looking at the clothing of the weight that you used to be. Simple and easy. So at one time I was a 3X. Now I wear an X large. And for the longest time I would go to the store and looking at the 3X clothing. Well, I'm not 3X anymore. But when you live so many years a certain way, you get used to that. And so I need to adjust my words of what I say. And I'm going to be called extremely frugal because that is one thing that I really am. I'm extremely frugal. The things that I have were not things that I bought on most cases. It's things that I bartered for, things that were given to me, and things that I 
found actually for free. A lot of people ask me one last question and I'm going to address that here. What about my husband? Well, he is as frugal as me. In fact, he's even more frugal than I would be. Him and I both grew up in the same type community. His mother wore a covering. His mother kept the plain. They continued to go to the plain church. And we both learned how to save money and to be very frugal.